hundred people. Also, the government has said that six cases of COVID-19 among crew members from an offshore oil vessel in the country. According to the Minister of Health, no vessel will be allowed to dock in any of the country's seaports except that which has been on the sea for over 14 days. And members will only be allowed into the country if they test negative for the COVID-19. The Minister made the third while addressing journalists at the weekly media briefing in Abuja. The measures, or the new measure, is part of government's efforts to curb the spread of coronavirus. Precautionary measures are also being taken by the federal government to protect our people. Only ships that have been at sea for more than 14 days can dock in our ports after crew members have been confirmed negative for COVID-19. An exception to this 14-day restriction are vessels carrying oil and compressed natural gas fuel because they require minimal or no contact at all between the crew and the ground personnel. With the increasing number of cases, Lagos is still the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak in Nigeria. The federal government of Nigeria has released 10 billion Naira grants to Lagos State to increase its capacity to respond to COVID-19 outbreak. Another 5 billion Naira Special intervention fund has been released to NCDC to equip, expand, and provide personnel to its facilities and laboratories across the country. The federal government, also through the Nigeria Air Force, has made provisions to bring back essential NCDC staff who have been away on training but could not return to Nigeria due to the instituted measures to close down airports in Nigeria and other countries. The Chinese government has promised to give us the technical support for some of their experts who can to connect with their experts on public health and the infection prevention and the control measures and also their expert in clinical management. So we shall be taking up that uh, offer to get the expertise uh, directly from China who have a lot of experience with this, uh, with this problem. In the nation's commercial capital of Lagos, the state government has announced a stimulus package for about 200,000 families to cushion the effect of the coronavirus pandemic. The state government, Babaji Desamodu, who gave the details during the media briefing, also warned that it may soon be locked down to help check the spread of the disease. He also asked parents of some students rescued at the Semen border to rest assured in visiting their wards are in safe hands. As it stands now, most of the cases we are dealing with have been imported cases. But we are also starting to see a trend that suggests that we may be entering a state where community transmission of the disease could also be coming in. Fortunately, because we have shut down all the land, sea, and air borders, we are now able to fully focus on tracking and halting within our communities. I'm pleased to also know that all our confirmed cases are doing well and that they are all in stable condition. Of course, we know that a total of three have since been discharged. We are in the process of um, reconfirming another five or six additional patients that once they turn a second positivity, a second negativity, they might be um, allowed to go home later tonight or tomorrow when the, the results are out. So we have people who, because of their daily means of livelihood, have been affected. And so we needed to have some stimulus package set out immediately. We are by this intervention targeting those who earn daily wage to feed their family, those who are vulnerable, the, what we consider as the lower part of the triangle, the elderly and the physically challenged, 
So at the first instance, we're targeting, and the graphs there show that indeed, if we carry on, and the public are receptive and compliant, we will soon see that yes, we're expecting a few more cases, but the responsibility is with the community. If you're able to follow the instructions and distance yourself, you will prevent the opportunity of the virus from increasing its victims because you don't give it the opportunity to spread from one person to another. As head to Cookie State and the state government has ordered a total shutdown of all activities across the state in its bid to prevent the spread of coronavirus. The deputy governor of the state, Mr. Edward Lodger, announced the measure at a press conference held at the police headquarters in Lokoja, the state capital. He said security agencies have been updated to enforce the stay-at-home directive of the state government. The deputy governor, who is also the chairman of Koki COVID-19 Squadron Committee, emphasized that only provision stores, tillers of food stock and pharmaceutical stores are allowed to operate. We are advising everybody to stay at home. And in staying at home, we would also ensure that mobility, especially by tricycle or car riders, will be restricted, effective from tomorrow being Saturday, the 28th of March 2020. And in collaboration with security agencies, that will be strictly enforced across the length and breadth of Kogi State. We also ask that only stores and sellers of foodstuff, pharmaceutical drugs and essentials should open from tomorrow. All other traders that do not fall into any of these categories should please endeavor to have a lockup. In Katsina State, Governor Amino Masari has also directed the closure of all borders with neighboring states, including the Shia Republic. This is in continuation with the state government's efforts to contain the possible spread of the coronavirus in the state. To this effect, therefore, movement of people into the state is strictly prohibited with effect from 6 a.m., uh, that's today, Saturday, March the 28th. However, fuel tankers and vehicles carrying food items and other essential commodities will be allowed into the state subject to their screening and test at the point of entry. The statement signed by the State Commissioner for Information, Culture, and Affairs, Yahya Sirika, says people are, however, at liberty to move within the state. At the head of the World Health Organization, says coronavirus has infected more than half a million people and has killed 20,000. But the Tedros Ghebreyesus, speaking to a Geneva news conference, appealed again for protective care for medical staff working to save lives. He also urged countries to refrain from using medicines that have not been demonstrated to be effective against COVID-19. There are now more than half a million confirmed cases of COVID-19 and more than 20,000 deaths. These are tragic numbers, but let's also remember that around the world, more than 100,000 people have recovered. The chronic global shortage of personal protective equipment is now one of the most urgent threats to our collective ability to save lives. WHO has shipped almost 2 million individual items of protective gear to 74 countries that need it most, and we're preparing to send a similar amount to a further 60 countries, but much more is needed. This problem can only be solved with international cooperation and international solidarity. When health workers are at risk, we're all at risk. Health workers in low and middle income countries deserve the same protection as those in the wealthiest countries.
countries. Today, we are delighted to announce that today Norway and Spain, the first patients will shortly be enrolled in the Solidarity Triangle. We will compare the safety and effectiveness of, our, of four different drugs or drug combinations against COVID-19. Now, many countries who thought they had very strong health systems are uh, very surprised to see that uh, they are so overwhelmed in a way that uh, they didn't expect. Yes, so we are going to be building health systems, uh, strengthening health systems at all levels from community to federal level. Now, uh, about uh, states locking down and the palliative measures, yes, we are working very well with NEMA. Uh, National Emergency Management Agency, and uh, they are looking at uh, being able to support communities with uh, the uh, needs, necessary needs, essentials, and uh, uh, to do the needful uh, for which they are trained and equipped. So the community sense of helping each other is also there. People help each other in community, and uh, it, it, it's helpful when within a community, for example, one person goes to do the shopping for everybody, takes money from everybody, and then goes to do the shopping, and then returns the shop so that not everybody is trooping to market. So that kind of uh, community support is necessary uh, to reduce exposure to risks. So they take it in turns to do shopping for their communities and also to help each other with uh, needless uh, travels and needless movement. So. That is a point for uh, support and palliative uh, measures.